Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel again. Nice to see you. Today I thought we'd have a bit of an update on the little pond outside my front door. So this is my tiny little front garden with its little water dish down there for the local wildlife and things. And in here, a little tiny barrel pond. What's well, that kind of half barrel thing? Uh, up in the corner somewhere, maybe around here, you can have a look at me building this or setting this up together. It's been in here best part of a year or maybe is it two years? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it's starting to fill out the garden a little bit. But the pond here, it's been empty because I've not put any livestock in it since the last um, fish that was in there last year. So over winter, it's not really big enough to, to make it through winter. So I took the fish in for the winter and I've not put anything back out yet. But we'll probably do that today. And there's been a few other changes that we can talk about. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at how it's going in general. This is as much for me so as I can keep track of what's going on in the garden and the growth. Um, that's, that's a little cat shelter in there. My cat likes to live in there, which is fine by me. It doesn't have to be in the house. But yeah, that's it. Just a tiny little front yard. little place to sit. And a little pond. Planting-wise, there's really just these horsetails here, and there's a, a lily here, which survived the winter pretty well, and some nice healthy-looking leaves on it. I have just given it a bit of a clean through. It's not really... it struggled with algae a little bit, but this bush, or twisted willow behind it, blocks it from a lot of the light, so it's not been too bad. It hasn't taken too much effort to clean it up uh, and the pond itself is this little pot here um, just to give the fish somewhere to hide if the local cats do come a calling um, but the last video on this you'll have seen I was talking about it being a solar power pond and that's this air pump here so this is just an under gravel filter fed by an airline and I've tried positioning um, solar panels all different places and throughout the year or throughout the time that I've had this pond I've slowly either killed them or dismissed them because they were doing my head in they were really noisy some of them and some of them plain just didn't work very well I tried a solar battery bank and tried one of those USB air pumps which was fine and that was the, the best solution for a while but the rain got in and corroded it a little bit so it didn't really it wasn't a long term solution so now I'm just running an airline out of my fish room which is actually behind these doors so this is my garage um, and I've got a, a line that comes out down here it's that black line there so if you ever wanted to know what kind of pressure the pump gives out that's a 50 meter line 50 meter air line and it comes out there just fine I can control that with a tap back in the fish room back in my fish room well, let's have a quick look at this is Penelope she's probably going to be going out into that pond the little goldfish my daughter picked up at Pets and Home because it was getting bullied and it was in a bit of a sorry state and she brought it home and I had to find a tank for it so I've been in here over the winter but I might put her out now see how she likes it but yes these are this is if I can get the light to focus I've got these little valves here um, which will distribute the, the air from my air pumps and this particular one it's connected to this big bundle because I haven't tidied it up yet but that's got 50 metres of air line which is running up and over there through there which is the front door for the garage and out into the pond and I simply if I want to shut it off just move that down move that up to turn it on full um, yeah these things are invaluable I'll put a link in the description to these things I run my entire fish room on these so as you can see there's one there that's feeding this side in this bank of tanks uh, there's one here which is feeding all these tanks and these tanks uh, and I've got the same on the other side but yes let's get on with this and of course because I've decided to make a video outside the heavens have just opened but anyway so one of the things I wanted to talk about is that obviously I'm talking about putting a goldfish in there this is not a goldfish size pond um, I I can't remember how big it is. I think I measured 150 litres or something like that. The only reason I'm considering putting Penelope in there is purely because that's quite a small goldfish. Um, it's considerably bigger than the tank that she's in at the moment. 
and she'll probably be fine because I can monitor this if nothing else. I have a security camera which links to my desk which you can see this pond so I get to see what's going on in it quite a lot. Um, it's really for some nano fish that you want some cold water nano fish in there. I've thought about putting my white clouds in here and um, that's probably a better fit for something this size. Um, so just, just because you see me put a goldfish in here doesn't mean that I'm advocating goldfish going into uh, small little half barrel ponds like this. Um, if you are going to use a goldfish then maybe some of the fancier, smaller fancier types are best. Uh, certainly nothing like a comet or your standard um, general goldfish, they will get way too big for this. And again, because of the size of it, this is a temporary measure anyway. This isn't a pond you can leave your fish in out over winter, for instance. It's just not enough water volume. This isn't just about being a fish geek. I mean, this is just a nice place to be. Um, it's about making a small space as natural as possible. These other houses here are close together. There's not a lot of space for gardens. There's loads of wildlife, whether it's bees or caterpillars or butterflies and dragonflies, all sorts. And just having this little, almost little oasis-like thing here and it just makes your day a bit brighter as you trudge off to work or not, as the case may be. So even though I said it's not about being a compulsive fish geek and you could just have this as a nice little nature pond, I am a compulsive fish geek so I'm going to put fish in it. At the moment we have a bag of white cloud mountain minnows which are going to live in here. Again, I must stress this isn't a full time solution. Um, they will not survive the winter in here if we have a bad winter so this is just like a version of summer tubbing if you like. You see lots of people where they will have tubs out in the back garden for breathing guppies and things like that so we're going to have a go with white cloud mountain minnows probably not going to get very far because these are quite small um, as you can see so I don't think they're mature yet well maybe you can't see but we'll leave them in there there'll be plenty of bugs and things for them to eat in there we can feed them up well and then we might put Penelope in in a few weeks for now, we'll just see what it's like with the small fish. So I'm just going to empty them in there. I'm not going to bother about the separating the, the dirty water that they've come with because they're the only thing going in there. And we'll see how we get on. There, the sun's come out for me to finish the video on. That's just a little update for you. I hope that was of some use to people. I would definitely suggest this as kind of a, a nature pond rather than a fish pond um, because it just it lifts the whole area quite a bit. But if you liked any of this or found it useful and you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. It'd be nice to see you again. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.